sprouting up beside London Bridge Station. The shard is climbing skywards. It's growing by around three metres a day. It will soon overtake Canary Wharf as Britain's highest building and should eventually be the tallest in Western Europe. When people used to talk about tall buildings, they were bland. They, they were not imaginative and there wasn't, I suppose, a proper recognition of the impact and responsibility of a tall building. Whereas what, we, what we're seeing now is some of the world's best architects being brought in, a huge amount of public scrutiny in terms of the way they're designed, and there is a recognition of uh, you know, creating buildings that reflect the character of the city of London. And of course, it's the views of London, which will be one of the main attractions. This is floor 25, where visitors will eventually be able to look down on the city from floor 72. Architect Renzo Piano describes the Shard as a vertical city, which will include shops, offices, a hotel and apartments. The site's already attracting plenty of attention. There are even enthusiasts who come here every day to watch the tower's progress. It, it's a landmark right from our window now, and you miss it when it ain't there because of the fog. <laughs> But not everyone is pleased about the way the Shard will dominate London's skyline. English heritage are concerned that the tower will spoil the views. And it questions whether, in 300 years' time, we'll still be celebrating the impact of this building in the same way as we do St Paul's Cathedral. Others, though, insist the Shard is already becoming a London icon. So it's from up here and you can see um, the towers begin to rise. Blogger and photographer Mike Slocum has watched it rise from his Brixton flat and says plenty of people are talking about it online. Generally people seem to like it. I mean there's a lot of interest in how the speed it's gone up which seems remarkably quick. I think the shard will be interesting and it will certainly be a beacon. It will be a landmark. A landmark that's due to be finished in spring 2012, just in time for the London Olympics. Sonia Jessup, BBC London News.